So what we have here today is one of Samsung's 2020 8K QLED TVs, the Q800T, you know, the affordable one. And since I have it here, I'll be, of course, reviewing it and comparing it to the LG C10 OLED TV right beside me. But before any of that, we have to unbox and set it up. So stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villain Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And here we are with another one of the 2020 4K, no, 8K HDR TVs. And if you're new here, on this channel we unbox, demo, review and compare the tech that entertains you. That means TVs like this. So if you're into that and you're new here or you just haven't subscribed yet, then you should definitely hit the subscribe button and come along for the ride. Alright, so let's see what's inside this box. As always, there's a quick setup guide. First we have the back of the stand and the screws to attach it to the TV. Then we have the bag with all the stuffs, like the remote, power cable, batteries and owner's manual. Now we can get the box off. The last thing that's in the box is the stand, but I want to leave that for last because if I take it out, then the TV won't have enough counterweight to support it. So let's leave that in until we get the TV out of the box. And as always, if you need a flat surface to place the TV on so you can install the stand, then you can use the box that the TV came in and use the styrofoam inside as structural support. All right, so first things first, let's install the stand. So what you need is this and we'll be putting the part that has the four screw holes against the TV. And we'll use this part to slip inside these holes right here. Just like that. And then we secure it with the four screws. And once that's done with, you need this bad boy. So these lips go through these holes. Just like that. And then the remaining four screws, we screw into right here, these four holes. You may not be able to see them, but trust me, they're there. And done. The Q800T comes in a 65, 75, and 82 inch screen size. It has a 7680 by 4320 8K native panel with 120 hertz refresh rate, 224 local dimming zones. It has support for HDR10, HDR10+, and hybrid log gamma HDR standards. It does not support Dolby Vision. It has Samsung's Quantum Processor 8K with 8K AI upscaling and the more advanced Object Tracking Sound Plus technology to track objects as they move across the screen. It has 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space and supports AMD FreeSync. It has Google, Alexa and Bixby Smart Assistants and has 3 HDMI 2.0 ports with enhanced audio return channel support as well as 1 HDMI 2.1 port for next-gen consoles and 8K sources. Hello and welcome. Please download the SmartThings app on your mobile to start TV setup. You don't actually need an app to set the TV up. Once you press right, then it'll identify all your HDMI devices that you have connected. So once everything shows up, you can press next. If your device doesn't show up as connected on this, you might want to check the cable, but we can go next because I only have one device connected. And after that, you set up your Wi-Fi. I prefer not to have interest-based advertisements enabled when I set TVs up, but your mileage, you may, you may think differently. So I leave those unchecked. Then you can choose whether you want to use Bixby or Alexa, but I choose neither. So you can say choose later. Then once you input your zip code, then it'll identify your cable service based on that location. After that, you can actually select the apps you want to have installed on the TV by default. You can select Prime Video since that's 
front and center. If you select that, then you'll have to sign in or create a Samsung account so you can actually download the apps. You can't just download it off the TV off the bat. Those are apps that are in their marketplace, but apps that are pre-installed on the TV like iTunes or HGTV, Disney Now, TLC Go, you can install those just by checking. So you check those and then done. So the intelligent mode analyzes your environment to better create a sound profile that is best for your environment. So if you want that enabled, then you enable intelligent mode so that also detects the ambient lighting in your room and adjusts the brightness of the TV in accordance. So if I uncheck, you see that the TV gets brighter. There's also a feature which enables you to tap the phone on the TV to actually share what's on your screen. But to do this, you need to have a phone that has NFC. First impressions of this TV, the picture looks really good. It's an 8K set, and of course, there's not much 8K material available anywhere besides random videos on YouTube, but that's pretty much it. It does a very good job of upscaling though, so I have to give it that. The TV has 224 local dimming zones, so that's 16 across and 14 down. When I did some testing, some initial testing, I saw that there was some blooming on the darker scenes when there is a bright object on a dark background, which is typical of LED backlit LCD TVs. That said, the colors are vibrant and bright and its contrast is pretty punchy nonetheless. If you're thinking about how this TV fits into the lineup, well think about it as the flagship 4K TV is the Q90T and this Q800T is an 8K but it's not the flagship but it still has better features than the 4K flagship but it's also below the Q900T above it. The design is very similar to the flagship QLED models where it has that one central stand and a very thin screen. But unlike those, this TV does not have a one connect box. It also has only one HDMI 2.1 port as denoted by a game controller on the side of that HDMI port. Which is interesting because since this is an 8K TV, you'd expect it to have more HDMI 2.1 ports, wouldn't you? But overall the design is very slick and modern looking and I really like it. You'll also see some light streaks across the screen on darker scenes, but that's from my lighting in the room. It has some very good anti-reflective properties, but the one downside is that it creates those streaks across the screen when the lighting is perpendicular to the screen. You only notice that on darker scenes though. But you'll see exactly what I mean when I do the screen test, which will have a reflection test, which will see how well the TV handles reflection. And if it's anything like the Q80T, which I reviewed a few weeks ago, then it'll handle it very well. So going forward, as with every TV I review, I'll be doing a bunch of tests on this TV. There's the gaming test, the screen test. There's also the comparison with the LG OLED. That video may be live depending on when you're watching this. If so, you can check it out in the link up there. But there's a lot more to come on this TV, including the full review, so stick around for that. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in this TV and what your general thoughts are about it. And if you're actually in the market to buy this TV and you want to help the channel out at the same time, you can use the affiliate links in the description to buy this TV. Or you can also get a cool t-shirt from the merch store, like this one. Totally up to you. Anyways, don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying be safe and peace.